Livingstone, although to most of my patients' parents, I'm simply Auntie Medora. I, I grew up with a passion for all animals and when I took my rabbits and my gerbils and the, the birds that I bred to the vet, I couldn't help but notice that the vets didn't really know much about these species. Certainly nowhere near as much as they knew about dogs and cats and I just didn't think that was right. So fast forward over the years, um, I'm a qualified vet. I've been qualified for 18 years and I've spent the vast majority of my career dedicating myself to exotic animals, which includes rabbits. So first of all, what I'd like to say is that gut stasis is not a diagnosis. It's often spoken about as if it's a diagnosis, but it's not a diagnosis. Gut stasis is a clinical sign. And it's simply put, it's a non-specific reaction um, to pain or stress in rabbits. So if a rabbit's in pain, they generally stop eating. So anorexia or reduced appetite, if not complete anorexia, um, leads to reduction in gut motility because rabbits' guts need this constant throughput of long length fibre chains to keep those guts moving. So when they don't consume as much or they stop eating altogether, they don't have that constant throughput of food. The guts slow down because the guts are slowing down and the contents aren't getting pushed through the tract quickly. The contents sit there and they ferment. There's a lot of bacteria in that bowel as well as some yeast. Um, and they ferment. And of course, a, a byproduct of fermentation is gas. And I'm sure we can all appreciate how painful gas can be when it builds up in our digestive tract. So these, these poor rabbits, they get this gas production, which stretches their bowels, that triggers the pain receptors. So you've got pain started it, and then you've got this cascade of systems that's resulted in more pain, which means that they become even further depressed and stop eating if they were eating in the first place. Um, so they can actually get signs of bloating because it might not necessarily be the stomach that's swollen, it could be the cecum, so the large intestine. And this all results in a negative energy balance. So what does the rabbit do? The rabbit mobilizes fat stores, fat cells from any fat stores to the liver to produce energy. But that in itself, uh, if it goes on for too long, can very quickly damage the liver and make it very, very fragile and easy um, to rupture. So what signs could owners be looking for that their rabbits maybe got is heading into gut stasis or has is suffering from gut stasis as a consequence um, to another condition. Well, rabbits hide things and that's because they're a prey species. And in the wild, if you don't hide the fact you're ill, a predator's gonna pick you off because you're gonna be easier to get rid of. So by the time they show illness, they don't care if they live or die. So we need to look for very, very subtle changes in our rabbits. Bear in mind, Rabbits have only been domesticated for about 500 years, so behaviourally they're still quite wild in their defence mechanisms. So we need to think about the wild type behaviour to understand our pet rabbits. So look for subtle signs. Are the poos smaller than normal? Are they a different colour than normal? Are there less of them than normal? Some rabbits will tooth grind. Tooth grinding is a non-specific um, sign of pain in rabbits. So it tells us our rabbit is in pain. It doesn't necessarily tell us where that pain is. There's some very good posters available called uh, on the grimace scale to look at facial expressions in the rabbit and ear position to give us an indicator is this animal sh um, exhibiting pain. But anything that's different from what you would consider your rabbit's normal could be important. Um, they'll, some rabbits will also perform what we call sham eating, so they will go and nose the food about as if they're eating. Again, they're trying to pretend that they're normal, that there's not anything wrong with them, but they're not actually consuming the food. If they have a sign of, of, of abdominal pain, as well as just signs of gut stasis, then get your rabbit to a vet, because 
they're thankfully the vast majority of um, anorexic rabbits um, respond very, very quickly to painkillers and prokinetics and assist feeding, so syringe feeding. However, there are a couple of, there's two main things that I always get worried about if I've got an anorexic rabbit with abdominal pain. And that is a liver lobe torsion, a foreign body. For virtually every other case of um, gut stasis as a clinical sign, I will stabilise that rabbit before I will investigate them because they're not stable enough to investigate other than bloods. So I would not be sedating down a rabbit that's got gut stasis. However, rabbits that have got a, a, a liver lobe torsion or a foreign body will not live long enough for us to stabilise them before investigation. And there's one very simple test that your vet can do to see if, if either of those are a possibility, and it's to check a blood sugar. That's because rabbits don't run on glucose. Rabbits run on volatile fatty acids. So yes, that you will get a small increase in your rabbit's blood uh, glucose um, level in the blood due to stress, but only a small amount. If the blood sugar is less than 20, Great, treat it um, with painkillers, fluids, IV fluids, syringe feeds, prokinetics, uh, that's fine. If it's, between, uh, if it's between 21 and 24, mm, getting a little bit more concerned there at that stage. So I will give them painkillers, I will give them IV fluids, but I will not use prokinetics. And the reason is a prokinetic mean pro is, is for and kinetic is movement. If you've got a foreign body blocking the bowel, the last thing you want is that bowel moving harder against it because you will rupture the bowel potentially. So if it's between the blood sugars between 21 and 24 ish, I will wait 15 minutes and recheck the blood sugar because if it's not something that I need to go into surgery straight away, generally speaking, with painkillers and IV fluids, you will find that that blood sugar starts to drop. When, if that blood sugar is dropping, I'm happy to go in with my prokinetics at that point. If the blood sugar is over 25, especially if it's over 30, um, then at that point I want full bloods to check the liver enzymes, to check and see if the rabbit's anemic. Because if it's a liver lobe torsion, the rabbit will be anemic and en liver enzymes will be up. And then we need to take that rabbit to surgery because if that is a liver lobe torsion and that, that torsion just means part of the liver lobe's twisted round on itself and we don't operate to remove that damaged bit of liver, that rabbit will bleed to death internally, okay? Thankfully, it's not that common. And it's relatively easy to diagnose once you know those few facts. If it's a foreign body, then we've got the option of surgery, uh, which intestinal surgery is quite difficult in rabbits because their intestines are so, so thin. Um, or painkillers, 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 IV fluids, because that rabbit's going into shock. So I will give twice maintenance IV fluids and I will give several different forms of pain relief. Multimodal analgesia, different drugs that work in different parts of the pain uh, pathway. To, and the reason for that is that if I can get rid of the rabbit's pain, then the guts will start moving gently of their own accord. If I can rehydrate the, the gut contents, then often the, the, the foreign body will move of its own accord but I still don't go in with my prokinetics um, at that stage. I will then, if I've proven it's not, liver, not a liver lobe torsion, um, and I've gone in with my painkillers and IV fluids, I check the blood sugar every 15 minutes until I know it's definitely coming down, um, and then I'll move to checking it uh, every half an hour. Uh, and once the blood sugar's probably down to about 20, then I'll go in with my prokinetics. Okay, so what do I do if it's if it's not if the blood sugar has isn't high and it's it's what I would term a kind of standard um, anorexic rabbit with gut stasis? Um, 
is that we, we stabilise them first. So IV fluids, assist feeding with syringes. Typically, I'm looking at 10 to 20 mils of syringe feed per kilogram of rabbit at least four times a day. Um, I will go in with pain relief and I will go in with prokinetics and drugs to help reduce the acid level in the stomach as well. Once that rabbit is stable, and by stable I mean it's passing faeces normally and bouncing about, not necessarily back to full appetite yet, um, because remember it could be dental disease that's causing this issue, then I will offer full investigation. And um, for me, that means full bloods, um, sedate the rabbit down and x-ray the skull as well as all the rest of the rabbit. Um, and it also involves a full clinical exam of all the, all the body systems. Mm -hmm.